Dan Perry here with another Dan on Tech video. This is the first in our series on C and C++. And in this video, we're not actually going to get into the C and C++. <clears throat> we'll be using uh, Visual Studio, uh, Microsoft's Visual Studio 2010 for this series. And because we're going to be using it, I'm going to start with a little bit about moving around and working in the interface. From there, we will then get into the actual programming. <clears throat> when you start Visual Studio, you're going to see a screen similar to this. And in it, we have a getting started area. This getting started area will be very good for you to start with. It's got some help. You can look at things like cloud and things. Um, you can look at uh, a lot of uh, the help functions, resources there to start it. Uh, in the left hand side we have our solution explorer it's blank right now because we don't have any open uh, project once we've opened a project there'll be things in the solution explorer down near the bottom we have several tabs uh, if we had a project open the second tab would show our classes for c plus plus the third would show properties uh, and then the fourth is the Team Explorer, if we were using Team Explorer. Uh, let's go back to the Solution Explorer so I don't forget where I'm at. <coughs> now, at the top, we have a pretty much standard set of menus. We've got our File menu, Edit, View, Debug, Team Data, and so on. We also have a number of icons here on our ribbon that will give us a shortcut based on what we're doing. Some of those are grayed out right now because we don't have an open project. Um, so the first thing we want to do is create a new project. Oh, if we already had any projects that we had worked on, they show up in some of the first, last few show up in our recent projects. And you see there are a couple there. We want to start a new project so we can... In, do one of a couple of things. We can do new project here. We can come to file, new, and then project. Really doesn't matter which way we go. I'll go ahead and click the new project. And the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to tell it what kind of project. Now, since other languages are supported, if we don't want to use C or C++, we can uh, click on the drop down on other languages and we could create another language project. We also have some other project types, some database and test projects. So there's a number of things we have to choose from. <clears throat> now we're going to do use the Visual C++. We can use C commands in the Visual C++. So during this pro uh, process there'll be times I will tell you the difference and show you things. And we have a number of things we can do, including windowed applications, creating libraries, an empty project. Everything we're going to do is going to be a Win32 console application. So I've got the Win32 console application uh, set. I'm going to uh, create and name this. <coughs> And the name of the project uh, I'm going to use, and I'm going to reuse this over uh, time, will be, uh, I'm going to call it uh, CPP Tutorial. And actually, let me do it this way, CPP Tutorial. Now, I didn't put any blank spaces in. You can use dashes and underlines. Although, in the name, although dashes can be very dangerous, uh, they can be misinterpreted or cause errors. So if you're going to do it, do underlines. I'm going to stick with uh, no spaces here. And when we talk about variables and identifiers, we'll talk about what you can use there. And we'll probably stick the same way there. So I'm going to click OK. Oh, by the way, when it does, it has a default location it's going to put it at. It's going to put it in my Documents folder under Visual Studio 2010 Projects, and it will create a series of folders. And in a later video, we're going to look at that series of folders. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK now, and it's going to come up and it says, hey, it's going to do a Win32 project. I do have the over and it's showing the overview. I can go to the application settings. If I need to change the defaults, 
I'm going to leave it as is where it's got the uh, radio button for a console application and it's going it says it's going to do a pre pre-compiled header um, that way I'm going to, it, it lets Visual Studio create the things that it really wants to create in that project so I'm going to click finish and when I finish it's going to take it a few seconds and it's going to create all the folders and things I need for this project and here it comes and because I did the pre-compiled headers and such it goes in and it creates and puts a little bit of code in here for me it has a comment that this is a the name of it CPP tutorial entry point an include statement uh, it has uh, the main routine that we'll be talking about and it's using the way Visual Studio likes it now as we go we're going to change that and we're going to use uh, pretty much a generic v, uh, C++ and C so that this would work whether we're using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio GCC or some other compiler over in your Solution Explorer, it's got our, uh, a folder structure where it has uh, the tutorial name, the dependencies. It's got the uh, header files that it's using, any resources we're not using any, um, and then the source files we're using. The source files are what we're going to be editing, and currently we're editing the CPP tutorial file. Um, we can see now we have our save button uh, if we want to need to save at any point we've got cut available we don't have the paste option some of these the undo and redo buttons because we've not done anything in it <clears throat> then we've got a couple of options here it says debug win32 so if we hit the run button that run button is going to do a debug I'm going to go ahead and hit it and in this case, notice it comes up and says your project is out of date. Well, we've never actually built the project, so obviously it will be out of date. Anytime we make a change to a project uh, file, it's going to also, when we hit the run, give us that. And yes, we do want to build it. Now when we do, down at the bottom we see an output where it is building it. It comes through, and after a few seconds it says the build succeeded. Now we saw a window pop up and then disappeared. Part of the reason it did this is that was the console for running the program, but because we didn't have actually anything here except this return zero, we didn't tell it to do anything in it. It just ran and uh, uh, then closed itself. If I come over here to my uh, build menu, I could build this solution, which we just did. We could rebuild it. We could do a clean solution. And if you're going from one file to another, one project to another, often it's a good idea to do a clean a solution. It gets rid of any temporary files and things that aren't needed. We've got our debug, which if we do the F5 is a shortcut for that for start debugging. We actually have, can start it without the debugging and things and I'm going to go ahead and do that start without debugging and you can see we get a uh, DOS con command prompt screen and all it says is press any key this is running that program but since the program did not do anything well it just says hey I finished it when I hit a key it will close that one over here at the right we have a macro explorer and we can look at macros that we may have created or we can create macros macros uh, are used for automating things and there are some samples here uh, under the macro recording I actually have a macro called G that I use as a quick way for grading assignments that have been turned in Well, I'm gonna go ahead and quit this tutorial at this point and when we pick up with the next one I'm going to uh, look at editing a file in, uh, in, in the editor, going in and starting creating, and then we'll get into actually explaining things.